Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the total synthesis of Juju Yain. This work was published by the group of He Yoon Lee of the Korea Advance Institute of Science and Technology in Orglet in June 2021. Juju Yain was first isolated in 1992 by Diaz and Herz from the Stevia jujuyensis plant. It is quite an unusual product and is the only eight-membered carbocyclic natural product derived from an atypical skeletal rearrangement of a germacranolide. Structurally, it bears a resemblance to the pleuromutilant fungal antibiotics which also contain a central eight-membered ring with pendant oxygen groups. The construction of this central eight-membered ring is one of the primary challenges in synthesizing jujuyain. This, coupled with its five stereocenters within this ring and the difficult transfused alpha-methylene lactone ring, makes this a challenging target for chemical synthesis. So let's look at the retrosynthetic strategy. The first disconnections occur at the alpha-methylene group and the pendant ester group. The intermediate that we use to generate this contains a hydroxyl group and methyl group alpha to the ketone. This can be disconnected, leading back to an intermediate containing a transannular ether linkage. This ether linkage, along with the alpha substituents, can be disconnected and generated from a tricyclic species containing a fused acetal ring through deoxygenation, vinylation and ether cleavage. Further disconnections incorporating an ether cleavage and acetalization leads back to an oxopyrillium dimer, which could be produced using a simple cycloaddition. So let's start by looking at this cycloaddition. The synthesis started by reacting a keto dihydropyran acetate with triethylamine. This deprotonates the alpha position to generate an enolate, and the acetate group is eliminated to generate an oxidopyrillium species. This then undergoes a regiospecific cycloaddition to form the dimer as a single isomer, with the selectivity arising from the electrostatic interactions between the oxonium and oxidomoieties. This dimer was taken forward and reduced by lithium aluminium hydride. This bulky reagent adds the hydride to the less sterically hindered concave side of the dimer, producing the diol in a 90% yield. This molecule was then desymmetrized by reacting with tosylic acid, which protonates the enol ether. This forms an oxonium intermediate, which is attacked by methanol, forming an acetal, which is further protonated and then fragments to produce a secondary alcohol and another oxonium intermediate, which is again intercepted by methanol to produce the desymmetrized triol in an 88% yield. To produce the intramolecular acetal, this molecule was reacted with PPTS, which protonates the dimethyl acetal, eliminating a molecule of methanol, and the resulting oxonium intermediate then reacts in an intramolecular fashion with one of the hydroxyl groups to produce a five-membered cyclic acetal in a 70% yield. With the construction of the five-membered ring now complete, they then turn their attention to the other side of the molecule. First reacting it with manganese dioxide, they selectively oxidized one of the hydroxyl groups to form an enone. This was then reduced with hydrogen gas over palladium on charcoal to produce the ketone in an 85% yield over two steps. The remaining hydroxyl group was then removed using a barton mccombe deoxygenation. Phenylchlorothioneformate was reacted with the molecule to form the thionoester in an 84% yield. To this was added a mixture of AIBN and tributyl tin hydride. AIBN fragments to form a radical which adds to the tin hydride species to form a tin radical. This radical then adds to the sulfur group and the resulting intermediate then undergoes a fragmentation producing a thioester upon the cleavage of the carbon-oxygen bond. The resulting radical then abstracts a hydrogen atom from a further equivalent of tin hydride to regenerate the tin radical necessary for further reaction and produces the deoxygenated product in a 99% yield. The next reaction carried out was the methylation of the alpha position of the carbonyl. Deprotonation with lithium HMDS formed an enolate which takes up a half chair conformation. In this conformation, methyl iodide adds to the less sterically hindered side of the ring to produce the product as a single isomer in an 87% yield. In the next reaction, this position was once again deprotonated using sodium HMDS. This generated an enolate which added to phenylvinyl selene oxide. This selene oxide species 
can abstract a proton to produce an alkene upon the elimination of a selenoperoxyl species. This product was produced in a 96% yield and the stereochemistry was determined using NOE NMR. This method looks at NMR coupling through space rather than the more common J coupling which occurs through bonds. This allows the researchers to see which groups are in close proximity within the molecule. At this point of the synthesis, the authors wished to cleave the transannular ether bond to form the 8-membered ring. They attempted this using samarium diiodide, which has previously been reported in the literature to be successful for these kinds of transformations. However, these attempts were unsuccessful, which they attribute to the poor orbital overlap of the ketal radical with the endocyclic carbon-oxygen antibonding orbital necessary for the fragmentation to occur. Instead, they observed the reduction of the ketone to an alcohol and the migration of the vinyl group. This indicates that there is better orbital overlap between the ketal radical and the carbon-carbon bond. To overcome this obstacle, they instead use a different strategy. They first deprotonated the alpha proton using LDA and the resulting enolate attacked diiodomethane. The ketone was then reacted with lithium aluminium hydride to produce a hydroxyl group which was protected as a TMS group to prevent unwanted side reactions during the ring opening step. To carry out this ring opening, they reacted the molecule with n buley which underwent a lithium halide exchange to produce a carbon anion on the methyl species. This triggers the fragmentation of the ether bond to produce an alcohol upon workup along with the exoolefin in place of the iodomethyl group. This reaction is somewhat similar to the burnett facella fragmentation which we saw in the synthesis of tetrodotoxin. This reaction was very successful and produced the product in a 99% yield. This newly produced olefin needed to be converted to a methyl group. However, this presented a challenge for regioselectivity as the molecule already contained a more accessible olefin which was more reactive. To overcome this, they brominated the molecule to act as a protecting group. To do this, they used NBS which was attacked by the olefin, producing a bromonium intermediate which was in turn attacked by the hydroxyl group forming a new ring with a brominated pendant group in a 57% yield. In addition to this product, they also observed bromination of the olefin appended to the 8-membered ring. This bromonium intermediate was attacked by the vinyl alkene, which was in turn attacked by the hydroxyl group, producing a tetracyclic product in a 30% yield. This unwanted byproduct could be reduced using zinc dust and acetic acid to reform the starting material and thus the reaction could be repeated to obtain more of the intended product. Taking this forward, the authors attempted to hydrogenate this molecule. However, these attempts were unsuccessful, which the authors attribute to the conformation of the 8-membered ring and the inaccessibility of the double bond. To change this conformation, they first deprotected the TMS group and then oxidized both the hydroxyl group and the acetal using a layer oxidation. The layer oxidation uses TPAP, which is tetrapropyl ammonium pyruthinate. The TPAP oxidizes the molecule and is reduced to ruthenium trioxide. This is reoxidized back to ruthenium 7 by NMO and the reaction can continue again. Detailed studies into this reaction show that there is a ruthenium 6 species which can also serve as an oxidant and this is generated by the disproportionation of the ruthenium 5 species into a ruthenium 6 and ruthenium 4 oxide. With these oxidations complete, they were then able to accomplish the desired hydrogenation. This was accomplished using Crabtree's catalyst, which is a cationic iridium salt that is guided by coordination to the carbonyl oxygen. This directs the hydrogen to the top face of the alkene, generating the product in a 62% yield as a single isomer. With this hydrogenation now complete, they could then restore the vinyl group, which was liberated by reacting the molecule with zinc dust and acetic acid. However, this molecule had the hydroxyl group in the wrong stereochemistry. To invert this stereochemistry, it was first oxidized to a ketone, again using a lay oxidation. This was then reduced using a bulky lithium aluminium hydride reagent. The steric bulk of this reagent prevents the hydride from being added to the top face of the molecule and produces a hydroxyl group with syn stereochemistry to the adjacent carbon-carbon bond of the fused lactone. With this hydroxyl group now installed with the correct stereochemistry, they then protected it using an ethoxyethyl group. 
Protonation of ethyl vinyl ether produces an oxonium intermediate, which undergoes attack from the hydroxyl group to produce the acetal in a 96% yield. The molecule was then reacted with sodium hydride, which deprotonates the lactone ring, generating an enolate, which then adds to ethyl formate. This product was not isolated and was instead directly reduced using sodium borohydride to produce the alcohol in a 72% yield over two steps. This was then reacted with mesyl chloride to form the mesylate, which served as an excellent leaving group to take part in an elimination reaction which was promoted by DBU. This deprotonates the molecule and eliminates the mesylate, forming the desired alpha methylene group in a 76% yield. The ethoxy ethyl group could then be deprotected using hydrochloric acid, and the molecule was taken forward to install the final ether pendant group. This was installed by reacting DMAP with the anhydride of the desired pendant group. This formed an activated ester, which was attacked by the hydroxyl group to form the desired ester in an 86% yield. Further deprotection of the ethoxy ethyl group present in this ester produced the target molecule in an 89% yield and completed the synthesis of jujuyane. Well, that brings us to the end of another total synthesis. If you enjoy these videos, please like and subscribe. And if you have anything you'd like to see, let me know in the comments down below. In the next video, we will look at the total synthesis and late stage CH oxidations of ventrochilobane natural products. <laughs>